She's feisty, she's funny, and she tells it like it is. Get ready for Empower Readings with Corby Mitlide. What are your opportunities right now? What are the possibilities? Ask Corby and cross the bridge from fear to fearlessness and fly. Here's your host, Corby Mitlide. And did all of you get blown away in the past couple of days? And I'm not saying, well, blown away. I don't know where y'all are living, but here on the East Coast, it was a fascinating drive from Albany, New York, all the way across the border to Canada today. 250 miles of gusting winds to 65 and snow squalls. And I'll tell you, I learned just what a good driver I was today because your host is still here. Hi, folks. It's Corby Mitleid, and we're doing Empower Readings. Tonight, um, we're doing a show called Dreaming Healing, Becoming Healing. Many of us in the metaphysical field come at it from what I call left field. We end up doing things we couldn't imagine a few months or years before because our previous careers were so utterly different from what spirit asks us to do. But my guest tonight, Art Gutkin, really went all out, going from being a successful trial lawyer, a career which requires study and logic and as much left brain work as you can imagine, to a medical intuitive with all the trust in spirit and getting out of your own way that that kind of work involves. So Art and your partner in life, Connie, welcome to the show. Do I have you both? You have us both. Yes, you do. Okay. Um, It's always one thing for me to talk about the story, but people really want to hear it from the guy it happened to. So once upon a time, there was this Philadelphia lawyer named Art. How's the rest of the story go? All right. I was a trial lawyer for 40 years, and I was a soap practitioner. And my main practice was... Uh, criminal defense work, and my civil portion, which was a, a large part of my part of my practice, was taking on discrimination cases for and uh, employees that were women, uh, seniors, uh, race, sex discrimination, and it was the little person against the major companies, and it was just battle after battle of trying to win cases for the little person against the major companies. And it was almost like swimming against uh, tsunamis because it was one lawyer trying to uh, win battles against major law firms. It was, uh, and the, the problem about it is, is that law is, a profession that is full of anger, is full of game playing. It's a profession where no matter what you say, nobody trusts what you say is the truth. And if you're trying to tell the truth, and if you're a truthful person, the more you try to convince people that you're telling the truth, the more they're convinced that you're a liar. And, um, And you just, after 40 years or so, it just burns you out. And then one night when I was talking to my wife, she saw how I looked and she says, look, you know, you're just going to die of a heart attack. I just, you don't need this anymore. I said, look, I, in 40 years, I've just really have made nothing that allows us to retire because when you fight major battles against major companies and you're fighting for the small person, you don't really gain a lot of income. You don't really see these things on television. On television, you always see these small lawyers winning multi-million dollar cases and winning. It doesn't happen that way in real life. And my wife said to me, look, it's not worth it. I want you just to quit. And I turned my license into the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. I said, I don't want my license anymore. And I took the unusual step of having my license retired. Not that I retired. I retired my license where I couldn't even advise people to what the law was. Two months later, I went to sleep. I never did any holistic medicine. I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in the afterlife. 
I just believe that when you die, you write it in your grave. Uh, and I went to sleep, and I had a dream. And in the dream, it was a dream where uh, a spirit came to me, cleansed me of all of the problems that I saw I had in life, all the issues I had in life, all the baggage that I carried. He actually walked me down a path and had me drop all the baggage I carried. And I woke up the next morning feeling as if I was somebody else knowing that I had gifts that I never had before. And right after that, I started having abilities that I never realized I had, thinking back on it, I know that I had some of these abilities that I never recognized, but over, that was in October of 2010, so we're talking about a little bit over two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, in this two years, the gifts have blossomed and blossomed and blossomed, and Connie, who is my wife, um, and we were married at that time for a couple years before my dream. Um, saw an immediate difference in me from the night before. And um, so, I mean, that's basically the story that how I transitioned from uh, the lawyer to who I am today. Connie, what was it like when the next morning he woke up and looked at you and said, um, I'm not the same art? Well... It's interesting because um, it's, it's, it's not something that, you know, it, it, people talk a lot, but it's hearing, seeing people walk the walk that they're talking, and Art never talked this way before. He was never spiritual, and this was just uh, wonderful because I always had been more spiritual, uh, well, than Art, since he wasn't, but... Um, then just to see the transformation, that it wasn't just words, that, that he really was a different person. And that's something that I, I saw, you know, every minute and every day since. And, and it's, it's been wonderful. Art, what was it like the first time you put your hands on someone and realized from your hands could come profound healing? Uh, it, it wasn't the very next day. That, that was a transition. That's the Hollywood version. Okay. That's the Hollywood version. The Hollywood version. But I'll go to the Hollywood version. It makes it a lot more dramatic. And, and <laughs> there was, there was, there was a, I'll tell you the first time I ever touched anybody, which is a good story that you, that Hollywood would love. I was, we're in Pennsylvania. My wife and I, Connie and I were down in Georgia and we're in this little store in Georgia, and there's this woman that I didn't even know that was nine months pregnant or eight and a half months pregnant. And I walk over to her, and I don't know who this woman is in the store in Georgia. And I walk over to her, and I put my hand on her stomach, and I touch her stomach, and I said, this is where your baby's head is, and your baby's going to be fine. And the woman said... I just came from my doctors. I get shook up with this story. I just came from my doctors, and that's where my baby's head is, and it wasn't supposed to be there. And we were worried that the baby was going to be healthy or not when it was going to be born. And she says, when is my baby going to be born? And I think I picked the date. And I picked the date that was supposed to be born, and I was right. And that's the very first time I ever touched anybody. And I didn't know what I was doing. I actually just I had this urge to walk over to her, and I touched her stomach. You shouldn't do that in Georgia. No, I've lived in Georgia. I wouldn't recommend it. That's nothing that Art would ever have done before either, especially with being an attorney. He, he would never touch someone. And so he was surprising himself with this transformation. And he had, he's had to get used to it but the, and understand what he can and can't do, I mean, in, with these impulses. But the very first healing in the very first six months of the gift, and even to this day at points, I, the first six months, there's an old friend of mine, he's 90 plus years old now, that I had known for 20 years at that time, who is a psychologist, a PhD psychologist, 
And I went to him, and I thought I was having a nervous breakdown. And I asked him for some therapy because I thought I was going insane. And he says, therapy is to stop you from doing bad things, and it's to make you better. He says, you're doing good things. You don't need therapy. Keep doing good things. And he says, I've known you for 20 years, and you've always been crazy, so just stay the <laughs> far. <laughs> no, but he says, he, he says, in fact, he did his Ph.D. thesis on, P, he says, I've been looking for people like you my whole life. He says, I did my Ph.D. on people just like you. He says, you're destined for great things. When people tell us that, there are two ways we can take it. We can blush and say no, or we can go, yeah, I am. What did you do? Um, I told him he was crazy. He's a crazy one and not me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, but he's, he, he's a dear, dear friend of mine. And whatever he says, I take to heart. And I, I knew that he meant that for real. And I took it deeply as a compliment. Um, but I mean, I had Connie can tell you, and I can tell you that at the first six months, the transition, it was extremely emotionally difficult. Even to this day, when I do healings, sometime after the, some of the healings I do and the results I get, I will go and cry. I just find it overpowering at times. I really do. Can, can you give us an example of, of a healing that set you back on your heels like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I even get emotional with this one. Um, I was, I went to a gathering. A gathering is when I get a phone call from a person who says, I know of you, I know you, I know about you. Um, I have people waiting for you at my house on Tuesday night, Friday night. I go to the house and there's 10, 15 people waiting for me. Connie's with me. I sit in a room. The people, Connie interviews the people, and Connie will say, this person has a bad leg, a bad arm, and I just put my hands on them, and all I have to do is touch somebody for four or five minutes, and they heal for the most part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so one time, a little boy let, let me try. If I break down on this one, Connie can handle it. There was this okay. little boy who was six years old, had his leg mangled by a lawnmower in, behind the knee, and he couldn't walk. A year before, he had his uh, leg mangled by a lawnmower and couldn't walk well. Nearly, he couldn't nearly walk. And his mother brought him to me, and... Um, he had several surgeries to repair the muscles so that he could walk. And he sat down next to me, and I put my hands behind his kneecap. And I could feel the muscles. Connie, Connie's writing down that it was transplanted ligaments. I don't remember the things I do. Mm -hmm. I, I forget. Connie chronicles the things I do. And I have books and books of the things I do that are written down. And I, but I do remember that I felt the muscles and the ligaments shift underneath my hands. Sometimes when somebody has something wrong with them, like the intestines, and I touch their stomachs, I can feel their intestines change position underneath my hands and go to the right positions they should be in. But this little boy's leg muscle, uh, ligaments change positions or muscles change positions underneath my hands. And he left and I healed somebody else. And then he, then he, then he started walking and then he came back to me and he sat next to me and he put his hand in my head. Uh, then about a week later, we received an email from, uh, as the, person who hosted the gathering, that the mother had called her, and this is her wording, not my wording, that there was three miracles that night. And one of the miracles, this again, this is not me using that word, that one of the miracles that night was that the little boy could walk properly after that. That was, that's the most dramatic one that really, that, that 
I'm just, it's still emotional to me. I mean, I've I've touched cancer and cancer's gone away, and I ha- I don't cry or get emotional about those. But for children, those those are the most emotional ones. I've touched MS, and MS has has gone into remission. Uh, and those things, but this little boy one is the one that's the most dramatic one to me. There's a there's a young man whose name I'm allowed to use, but I won't use it right now, in Rhode Island, who has cerebral palsy, and he was scheduled for surgery on Monday or a medical procedure on a Monday, and I saw him in Expo on Saturday, and I put my hands on his brain was drying. If you know anything about cerebral palsy, yes. And his brain was drying, and I put my hands on his head. And that was the only time that I can remember, maybe one of the few times, I started crying like a baby when I put my hands on his head. And his mother took him to, I'm going to see him next weekend, I think. Um, yeah, I am going to see him his next weekend. To his mother doctor. took him on Monday for the procedure, and they caught it off because, his, it. because his brain had lubricated between Saturday and Monday. And they called off that procedure. And I see him every time I go to Massachusetts. I go to Massachusetts on a regular basis. You know, I'm going to just say the image and the message that came to me when you were describing that. You said that his brain was drying out. And what and what did you do for the first time? You cried. And I very firmly think that your tears were somehow the lubrication that that child needed. That. Have you ever looked at it this way? I, I, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, you're right. I, I put such a wall around myself when I do the healing so I don't get sick or feel the emotions. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't even look at it that way. There's only one time I don't protect myself, which we haven't talked about yet. But when I do the hands-on healing, I put a tremendous wall of protection around myself so that I don't, get any feelings or emotions of my clients because I don't want Uh, go ahead yeah when you okay because this is fascinating to me because I do hands-on healing very minorly compared to you Uh, and again I didn't have any training either I just know that when somebody hurts and I can get out of the way I get a clear visualization and the pain can usually recede and and things come a little bit back to normal but I literally drop the ego, get out of the way, and let spirit work through me. When you put up those walls to keep your ego, emotion, whatever, from bleeding through, how do you also leave enough of a conduit for spirit to do the healing? I don't know. That's a a valid answer. I ask the spirit to come through my crown, and I bring the spirit to invade my entire, and in, 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 not invade, but to, uh, in, uh, to permeate my entire body. And then I ask the spirit to go through my hands and into the person. And you've seen me do healings, and it's exhausting to me to do a healing. When I do 15 healings in two or two and a half hours, I can regenerate myself in four or five minutes between people, but then I have to sleep for a day after that. Mm -hmm. Um, When I do MS, multiple sclerosis, I actually put my hands on four or five different parts of the body, but at that point, when I'm done with that person, I usually have to go to sleep for 10 minutes or maybe the rest of the day for MS, because that's how exhausting to do an MS heal for me. Yes, MS is is a toughie. But I have... Um. Yeah, when when Art um, protects himself, it's mainly so he doesn't take on the illness of the person he's healing. Do you feel that you have to ground out? I know that uh, with me, the minute that I'm done healing somebody uh, or being the conduit, then I either have to drop my hands to the floor, ground it out that way, or sometimes like a good surgeon, I will go into the bathroom and scrub my arms, hands and arms up to the elbow. Just to make sure I don't have stuff. When I first started, but not now. Now you can just do it mentally? I just do it mentally. Okay. Okay. But, um, I mean, the hands-on is only one of three or four things that I do. The the rest of the healings I do are 
are be, uh, are beyond hands on. I mean, they're just. Uh, Can you uh, talk about those? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. One of the, one of the things I, I I do long distance healing. My long distance healing is hands on. Uh, I will heal people only when I only do long distance healing when they're sleeping, because I believe there's no resistance during sleep. And unlike other types of long distance healing, and I'm not saying that what I do is, is not Reiki. Even though I like Reiki, Reiki people are good. All other kinds kinds of healing are good. Everybody that does healing is a good healer. But when I do long distance healing, I speak to the person before they go to sleep. I tell them what to think. I tell them what body position to put themselves in before they fall asleep. And I tell them where I'm going to put my hands on their body while they're sleeping. And I will get up two, three o'clock in the morning and I actually will put myself mentally with them in bed and put my hands on their body in bed while they're sleeping and actually do a healing on them while they're sleeping in bed. And I've had tremendous success. I've had a woman in Florida that had cancer that was stage four liver cancer that went into recovery. I've had um, a man who had convulsions that had uh, stopped convulsions in the hospital the very next day after the doctors couldn't stop it. I had an MD who was in a European country, which I won't mention, I put hands on here that has stopped the MS and it stopped further when he went to Europe and I did long distance healing with him while he was in Europe. So I do long distance healing in that fashion. I do for all sorts of things. Um, I also do meditations. I have the ability if I can see someone's picture to be able to see their life from their womb to the present and be able to establish the events in their life and to establish patterns that the Spirit will show me that are creating adult problems such as relationship problems or multiple sclerosis that they have or autoimmune diseases and I have that ability, and the Spirit will say to me, if they send me the picture on a Monday, the Spirit may not say to me for a week or a week and a half, this is a time that you are to meditate on them, and this is what you are to see. And I sometimes see their um, actual events. Sometimes I actually feel their pain. If a person has been beaten by their parents, I actually can feel the beating sometimes at a particular age. One time I saw a duck's foot at the age of two, and I said, what does a duck foot mean? And the person told me that at the age of two, they went to a, a, a relative's house that raised ducks, and they forgot that at that age, at two, at that house, something happened to them, which turned out to be the key in their emotional development that caused to be, caused to be the key of the disease that they had as an adult. I'm summarizing it, but it's easier to do that this way. Um, but I can't do it if somebody just calls me up or asks me to do it over the telephone immediately. But if they send me their picture, I can do that um, whenever the Spirit tells me it's time to do it. Okay. And it's, sometimes I do it, I see metaphors, sometimes I get the actual feelings. One time I was meditating on somebody, and at the age of 16, I fell off the chair with tremendous pain my meditation bench with tremendous pain in my gut. Well, at the age of 16, they had a burst appendix. Wow. Okay, and that's the sort of thing. One time at the age of eight the other day, I couldn't breathe, and I just couldn't catch my breath. And I have to pull myself out of the meditation to find out if it's me not being able to breathe or whether it's a person. They said at age eight, they had their first, um, what is that called? They had, they had their first panic attack in their life. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't say to them, you had a panic attack. I said, why couldn't I breathe at the age of eight? They said, because they had their, that's when they had their first panic attack. We're speaking with Art and Connie. Uh, it's Art Gutkin and Connie, last name? Fire, my wife. But uh, uh, Okay, she, I know, but some of us, we, we use a different name. So Art and Connie. Um, 
We are with Empower Readings. It's Corby Mitlide. We're just about at break. When we come back, we will continue talking to them about uh, lots of healing that art does. We'll also be taking your readings, as always, so stick with us. Welcome back to Empower Readings with Corby Midlife. Your calls are next at 248-809-3475. 248-809-3475. Empower Readings on Empower Radio. EmpowerRadio.com. Welcome back to Empower Readings. I'm your host, Corby Mitleid, and we're speaking with Art and Connie. Art Gutkin is an amazing, amazing healer, and um, like me, he kind of got handed his draft notice by spirit uh, without taking special courses, without deciding one day, I think I'll be a healer. It just kind of happens. But he does a lot more than hands-on healing, and we're starting to discuss that. All right, a lot of what you do is also hypnosis. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, I was doing, I'm a certified hypnotist, uh, and Connie, who's here as well, is a certified hypnotist. But I got my certification just because people like to hear that you're certified. Um, it, I started doing hypnotism once, I had my dream, and I was doing it long before I was certified. But the spirit, you know, showed me how to do um, hypnotism. In fact, I was doing hypnotism even before I realized I was doing hypnotism. I was healing people, and I was holding my left hand up to people, and I would say, why don't you feel the energy go into your body from my left hand? And I would hold my left hand maybe six or eight inches from people, and they would say, wow, I feel that energy going to my head. Next thing I know, they were in a state of trance. And I would tell them things, and they would be, I would say, this is where you are. And they'd be going and basically going to places that I would be suggesting. And I realized that I was doing hypnosis. And so um, I basically was doing hypnosis. So I, I took, you know, a certification courses just to find out to make sure that I wasn't messing up people's minds with what I was doing, to make sure that what I was doing, I was doing safely. But what I do in my hypnosis is unique, I believe, in the sense that in addition to my hands-on healing, and we had talked about my meditation. In my meditation, as I said, I can see people's lives from the womb to the present. I also have a very good intuitive sense. I can meet somebody... I can really tell a lot of issues in their lives um, just by talking to them. And I can say, I, I can just feel a lot of things about people. So between, or among is proper English, among the, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, my father was uh, Captain Grammar Pants like that, so I highly appreciate it. Among I, I, those I, abilities... I, it's crazy, too. <laughs> uh, but with the, with the meditation, the intuition, and I really do a good talking with people ahead of time, I form a, a, a metaphor, I form a story that that really works well and uniquely for people. I don't, if somebody has like a relationship problem, I don't say to them, you're going to have good relationships under hypnosis. I don't do that because the subconscious doesn't like being told what to do. Nobody really likes being told what to do. I form a really nice story for people that really likes working well. Like for instance, I'll give you an example very quickly. I have a client that has constantly does things over and over and over again and always is batting her head against the wall. So yesterday, uh, I shouldn't have said that, um, I, I created a story, and I'll make it story very quickly, that she was climbing a mountain and kept going up the same path and kept failing to go up the path. 
and succeeding, the up the mountain and succeeding. So I eventually have her go up the mountain and see a new path up the mountain. And she goes up the new path and goes to the top of the mountain and sees a pond at the top of the mountain, looks in the pond and looks at herself and is so happy and so wonderful that she made the path, and that she climbed the path, and she sees herself as success within the pond. So I created a story for her. And after she came out of hypnosis, she says, oh, I was so frustrated until I found that right path and I saw myself in that pond and I was so proud of myself. She says, boy, you have me so frustrated. I said, I never told you you were frustrated. She says, I created the frustration. I said, yes, you did. But she says, I'm so proud of myself now. So I create stories for people. How does that, how is that different from a guided visualization? Because there is a subtle difference. Um, because I do, I, what I do with a trance, I put a person in a trance and I eliminate the conscious, um, mind's objection to healing a lot. See with hypnosis, uh, the conscious mind will reject the ability to have the person heal because a lot of times the conscious mind is afraid that the pain of healing is worse than the pain of the disease. So the conscious mind will stand there in the way of the subconscious and yeah. say that I fear the healing. So with hypnosis, you get rid of the conscious, a guided visualization, which, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, is when you're just telling a person to have a visualization, but the conscious is there to block that. With hypnosis, you get rid of the conscious objection to it. You go directly to the subconscious. Am I correct in your in my interpretation? I'm not sure because I'm not a hypnotherapist, but if there are hypnotherapists out there who are listening and who would like to join in the conversation, we would love that. Uh, also remember that we are doing readings for you in this half an hour, 248-809-3475. That's 248-809-3475. Are one of the things that I find gets very much in the way of healing people is they're so attached to their original stories. If I'm not this person that's had all this pain and all these people were mean to me and if I have to give up my story, who am I? How do you get around that? Well, there's two ways. Um, there's, well, what you're talking about, there's two kinds of people you're talking about. One is a person, which is what they call a secondary gain, there are people that live for the sake of their problems. And their whole life is living for the sympathy that their problems have. And those people are very, very hard to work with. And one way of working with them is you do an age regression where you find out what the root of the problem is, and there's two ways of doing that. One way of doing that is if I meditate, I can find the root of the problem, and once I do the root, find the root of the problem, I can do hypnosis and take them on an age regression back to that age and have that particular problem at that particular age addressed in an age regression meditation. And what age regression does is, I'll give you an example, which is the easiest way to explain it, is if something happened at the age of two, you have the adult person in the hypnosis tell themselves at the age of two that everything is okay. What happened at the age of two is now resolved. And that resolution dissolves the issue that happened at the age of two. The good thing that happens with my meditation is that people don't realize what those issues are at that young age because they're not remembered, they're repressed and deep down inside. And a lot of people even can go through analysis and a lot of times they don't even realize it with my meditation. Sometimes I have the ability to see that. The other thing is that, um, and this is my belief, that um, 
and I'm a reverend as well, so, you know, I do this on a spiritual basis, not as a psychologist or psychiatrist, and I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, licensed as yeah. a psychologist or psychologist. I do this on a spiritual basis as a reverend. But um, adults don't understand when things happen to them as a child, and if a parent says to you as a child at the age of two or three, I would like to kill you, or some parents do, unfortunately, the child will believe that at the age of two or three because they diff- can't differentiate between what an adult means and what the adult doesn't mean. And it gets imprinted on the child's mind like a duck sees something for the first time. And it stays with them for their whole life till the time they're an adult. And an adult can say, well, I know my parent didn't mean it. But the subconscious is carrying that their entire life and is poisoning them and hurting them. And that's why you need like an age regression hypnosis to have that removed by the adult saying, I am you everything's okay, and let me tell you, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And people can just let go at that point because it's like carrying around a book with you and all of a sudden the book's not there. Well, if the book's not there, you can't read it. You can't keep going over it. Excellent Is that a good analogy? Perfect analogy. You're really good. Yes. Okay. Now, I know that you and Connie are beginning to do some work together. Connie, you're in, you're still a nine to fiver at this point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oi, honey. Yeah. <laughs> do I sympathize? Yeah. <laughs> so, Art's been doing this um, spirit work full time, but weren't you the one that was spiritual in the first place? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I... How'd you how'd you hook up with Mister Left Brain in the first place? <laughs> we uh, we met at the local uh, community college where we both worked, and it was love at first sight, argument at first sight. What? Uh, actually, um, I uh, was um, part of the support staff there, and we needed some help with um, uh, just some issues, employment issues, uh, and. So I knew that Art was an attorney, so I asked if he would help. And so he helped out and um, with our union, and um, we got to know each other better. And I knew each other for six years before we started, be, uh, before we even went out on a date. On a date. <laughs> well, that's, Connie, that's Connie, called Connie, careful research. Well, Connie <laughs> was a widow for how long before we went out? Um, uh, about eight years. Connie was a widow for eight years before we even went out with each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I had unfortunate health issues on my side as well that caused me not to be married. Um, so, I mean, so it it wasn't as if, you know, we knew each other for a long, long period of time. Mm-hmm. Was the spiritual on one side, non-spiritual on the other? Um, something that was difficult to work with, or you just made adjustments before you got got stuff. I won't say got religion, but got spirit. Well, what's interesting is um, Art was he's just such a, a, a kind and caring person um, that it it was it was hard for me to think that he, there wasn't some spiritualness deep down inside him that he just hadn't recognized yet. Okay. So you were the Pepe Le Pew and he was Miss Kitty. Just, uh, I know it's in there. I will just romp after you until it happens. (laughs) So, um, so here you are. And now he's been doing the spiritual work. You're still working at the college. Um, What are you going to do to jump ship? What do you guys have planned? Well, <laughs> we are uh, starting this new. Yeah, we're we're starting it. See, I don't want to. Everything right now is art, gut, and medical intuitive. What we're starting is what we're starting now is SG healing, fire, gut, and women always get the first billing. <laughs> uh, fire. Gut, what a guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> SG healing and hypnosis. And so that's what our new business is. We're having a website that as soon as our ugly pictures are taken, well, Connie's good picture, my ugly picture, is going to be taken this weekend. 
the website's going to go up this weekend, and that's going to be www.sghealingandhypnosis.com. That's going to be okay. going up this week, uh, probably after this weekend. So, Okay, and so what's that going to consist of? Um, it's going to consist of what we do, all of our services. We're going to have a free newsletter on it. We're going to have uh, we're going to have seminars on it. We're going to have questions that people can ask. We're going to have a membership on it where if people want to pay ten dollars a month, they can uh, they can get discounts on the seminars. They can have monthly fifteen minutes free telephone consultation. Um, uh, you know, it's going to have Event. events. It's, it's a it's a really nice um, website that we built, and the only thing it's waiting on is our pictures. And it's going to have a bio of Connie, a bio of me, both of our pictures, and um, our contact. And it's our contact information. Do you want that now? Absolutely. Um, tell everybody how to get a hold of you two amazing people. Okay, the uh, contact number, it's an 800 number, so it's, you know, anywhere around the country. 888-506-5795. The um, email address is sghealing at aol.com. Um, that's for now. And that's for now. Okay, AOL. AOL, okay. yeah. Let's <laughs> see. Your husband's never allowed to say anything without being double-checked by the wife. Now, the hypnosis I have done, which I didn't say, I have done a number of hypnosis sessions over the telephone. I've done, in fact, two this week over the telephone. And Mm -hmm. I do hypnosis by Skype. And there's a great service, which is free. It's called Uvu, O-O-V-O-O, which you don't even need a uh, Wi-Fi. You can do that anywhere, which is like a Skype, and it's a free app. For cell phones, and you can, and I can even do hypnosis sessions using Uvu. Um, that is really neat. Yeah, it's a good app. And oh, one last thing, my I, uh, I also teach um, the basic techniques of healing that um, I do. I can teach a person to lay hands. When I lay hands, I only have to lay hands on a person for four minutes for the healing to take effect. It's not like any other kind of, um, it's not like Reiki where it's like half an hour, an hour. Just tell me where the pain is. I lay my hands on that spot. Four minutes later, maybe the pain is gone that moment. Maybe it's gone an hour later. Maybe it's gone the next day. Maybe it's gone partially. Sometimes it's not one and done. Sometimes. Sometimes it's one and done. Sometimes it's not. With multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, cancer, And things like that, it may be three, four, five sessions. With chronic pain, um, that may go that may go away. Um, Yeah, and if there's something that keeps going away and coming back, that's usually something which I have to meditate on because that is something which is from the person's past. But I can discuss that with the person if they want to call me or anything like that. so that's basically, um, but what I do, I'm like, for instance, I'm teaching this weekend, I'm going to be in Massachusetts. Uh, um, I, I travel um, to areas. If there's enough people that want me, I will travel to areas instead of people coming to me. But again, that depends on the number of people. But this weekend, I'll be in Massachusetts teaching what I teach, and I teach basic techniques, and I'll teach the person how to heal. And if they practice long enough, I teach meditation along with what I do. And if a person meditates and does the healing as I do the healing, they can acquire skills that they won't even believe that they're capable of doing. But I've had students of mine actually go out, lay hands on people, and get results that they're so proud of. And um, I can teach people basic hypnosis techniques. Um, I can teach people, and that's a spirit. The spirit. The point is that, um, you know, if you're a healer, you can teach people to heal. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, you know, unique. All he- 
healers have the ability to teach other people to heal. Um, but I can teach people to hold their hands up to other people and actually heal them without touching them. This is one of the things that I love because people know that I am always saying, y'all can do what I do, whether it's reading cards, whether it's doing past life work, whether it's talking to dead people. You can learn how to do this. God did not run out of membership cards. And when I hear someone like you who is so willing to share what he knows and help other people empower themselves, those are the kind of teachers that we need. You know, there are 7 billion people in the world. I can't read them all. You can't heal them all. So we need helpers. What can I tell well, I would you? Love to, right. I would love everybody to, in this, on this earth to be healed. I can't do it myself. If I can, get, if I can, t- if I can teach 100 people and those 100 people can teach 100 people more, then I have done what the Spirit wanted me to do. Do you have... Um, people that you see as the next generation that they have kept up with their healing and they too are doing amazing work? There are, there are, I've taught dozens of people and I know that there are people among those people that are still doing healings and that have gone on to another level beyond the first level. I only teach teach four to six at a time because I get exhausted teaching. Yeah. If someone wanted to find the ability to heal within themselves, what do they have to do to prep to be open to it? Anger is the first, first emotion that has to be lost. And I teach people, when I teach, I teach, the, I teach them methods of removing anger, jealousy, um, understanding, attack, uh, understanding anger, understanding jealousy, understanding attachment to excessive emotions, understanding materialism. I teach all of that as part of my school. Before I even let a person touch somebody, I teach them in the first half of the course understanding themselves and their emotions. Perfect. We're coming up on the last five minutes of the show. It has flown by. Is there anything in particular that I didn't get to ask you that you want to Tell people that they no, need to know. Not really. This has been. I've done radio shows before, and this has been really enjoyable. Um, I just really we've covered everything. I just, I, I just, you know, I just am so grateful that I've been given the gift that I've been given. I get phone calls every day. I just, I just don't. Um, I just, I just. Don't, I just don't uh, have the, um, I just wish I had the time and the resources to help the people that come. I get phone calls from people so far away that I can't get to them. I have people that don't have money that I would like to get to, but the distances are so far. I just really wish I had some way of helping some of the people I can't help because it's not all about money. It really isn't. No, it never is. That's the only thing I... Connie, do you have anything you want to wrap this up with? Um, No, just, I guess, uh, thank God that he's given us these gifts and each other, the connections. It is always so necessary for those of us that are out in the world doing this kind of work, whether it's healing or reading or whatever, that we all do better when we have someone behind us that believes in us, loves us, believes in what we're doing. Um, I know that you guys believe in each other. I have Carl, my wonderful husband, without whom I could never go out and do this full time. Um, Everybody out there, if you are looking to heal yourself, if you're looking to help heal others, Art is the man that you want to talk to. All right, real quick, give us the new um, website and your phone number again. New website is www.sghealingandhypnosis.com. And the phone number is 888-506-5795. All right, and Connie, this has been 
uh, one of those flyby hours. It has been wonderful talking with you. Um, I will have to find a way to get myself to wherever you guys are. Um, out there, for those who are wondering where the heck to get in touch with me, it's very simple. Firethroughspirit.com on Facebook. Fire Through Spirit or Corby Mitlide. You can always reach me at 877-321-CORBY. Thank you so much. Be well. Be safe. Keep doing your amazing, amazing work. Um, I actually do have somebody with MS. I'm going to get in touch with you right away because uh, I think that you can make some miracles with him too. Thank so you, Corby. Thank you in advance. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was such a pleasure being with you. I hope to see you again soon. It's from your mouth to God's ears, as they say in the tribe. Right. Okay, all of my people out there, have a fabulous, wonderful, warm week. Stay safe. We will be here next week with Richard Maltz, who is also a shamanic healing, and that'll be our triple threat healing group. And we'll learn more about empowering yourself and empowering readings next week. Have a great one. <laughs> 